Hey guys, as you can see, I am super pumped. We've got the Shoe Research VTF 15 version two in for review. Appreciate Dr. Shoe for reaching out, asking if he could send this for review. You guys, over the years, you've asked me to review some of their products, and this is the first time experiencing it, so I am really excited about this. So as you can see, this is a pretty big subwoofer. This is a 15 inch subwoofer. We'll look at all the specs here in just a little bit but you're definitely gonna need some space. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that out of the way. So one thing that we have talked about even on the podcast over the years, past two years that we've been doing the podcast is value. And one thing that I can see and what I've heard from a lot of you guys is just the value that shoe research provides. All right, so we've got a couple staples in here. I went ahead and Pop those out. Probably find these in my carpet later on. Hopefully not. All right, so up top we got just a small piece of foam and that's just separating, kind of keeping the box, the inner box from sliding around. Let's go ahead and flip this over. Got a couple corner pieces here to protect the subwoofer. So right on the top here, we've got, on the top we've got a power cord and a HSU base test CD. Now that's slick. All right, I like that. Got some setup instructions. A little quick guide, Let's lean it down. So as you can see, we've got really thick foam inserts that go around the corners, around the edges to protect during shipping. Especially with heavy subwoofers, that's always a great thing. All right, so the challenge here, is we're gonna have to flip it over. I'm gonna do it on the side because you got an amplifier back here. You got the subwoofer up front. Definitely don't wanna damage that. Move that. Ooh, dude, I'm liking that. Nice shiny finish. All right, you guys ready? Let's take a look underneath. Nice, so we got dual ports down here that can be either configured as sealed or ported. Really nice stout grill here. Definitely takes a little bit to get it removed, so that's good. It means it's not gonna fall off during playback. Now this is something nice that I haven't seen brands do before. We've got metal pegs right here. So you see those actually unscrew. I like that design. And again, just really thick wood here lay that off to the side Woo! let's get a close-up of that looking at the front of the unit we've got a 15 inch woofer down here at the bottom you can see we've got these port plugs so you can configure this in different ways depending on your room whether you want it sealed or ported so for now we'll go ahead and put the grill back on like i said this is a pretty stout grill definitely like that Looking at the plate amp on the back of the subwoofer, we can see we have both XLR balanced inputs as well as unbalanced RCA inputs. We've got a volume knob, phase switch, two EQ modes depending on whether you're using it ported or sealed, a Q control, crossover frequency, a toggle switch for internal or external crossover, and a toggle switch for on, off, or set it to automatically turn on. Now this Bash amplifier produces 600 watts continuous and 2000 peak. Now this satin black finish is absolutely gorgeous and I really like the round corners on the edges. Looking at the bottom of the subwoofer, you'll find some really beefy rubber feet and that keeps the subwoofer from sliding around on your floor. So once the unit was unboxed, now it's time to get it set up in my living room. So when we take a look at my living room, I wanna show you a couple of things and hopefully this will be provide some education as well as inspiration for you and your setup. So in my room, just like all of us, we only have limited amount of places we could place it. So if I were to remove these two, I could put the subwoofer here on what I call the angled wall. I could put the subwoofer here to the right of this speaker. I could put the subwoofer to the left of this speaker, which is where I have it now, or I could put it over in this corner. As you can see, I really don't have anywhere else in this living room that I could place the subwoofer. 
Now what you may find is the place that you think is the best is actually the worst. Now oftentimes we like to place a subwoofer in our room where it looks the best, but unfortunately most of the time that's not where it performs the best. So I want to take you into the theater room. I took some measurements with REW, which is Roomy Q Wizard, and a calibrated microphone, the U-Mic 2. Now that allows me to see how the subwoofer measures in various places and positions in my room. Also did some compression testing to see the maximum output of the subwoofer. And I even did some measurements on the various tuning options that we have within the subwoofer. So let's head on in and take a look. All right, guys, so we're in the theater room. I've got REW, which is Roomy Q Wizard, pulled up on the computer. And you can see I have three files here. We've got positions, we have tuning modes, and we have compression tests. And we're gonna go through all three of these. So first, let's go ahead and open up positions. Once that opens up, I'm gonna come up here and click all SPL. And down here, I'm just gonna turn everything off for right now. So down here at the bottom, you can see I've got one marked as left corner, left of speaker, right of speaker, and the angled wall. And you remember when we were in the living room, I showed you those are the four positions that I have to work with in my room. And so we're gonna turn these on each, like one at a time, and I'll walk you through on what we're looking at, especially if you're new for uh, looking at REW, which is Room and Q Wizard. So let's take a look at the angled wall. Over on the far left over here, you can see down at the bottom, we're measuring at 15 hertz. So that's the really low frequencies. Here's 20 hertz, 30 hertz, 40 hertz, all the way up to 120 hertz. That's pretty much our base region. Uh, most of the subwoofer information, you're gonna be playing about 80 hertz down to as low as the subwoofer will play. So here in this area right here, this is how it actually measured. So it shows you over on the left, in decibels, how loud is it at that frequency? So if we look down here at 15 Hertz, it was about 80, if I click on it, we can actually see it was 87 decibels. But up here at say 18.79 Hertz, it was 94. So you can see the volume is varying quite, you know, kind of drastically. Ideally you want it pretty flat but it's hard to do that in, uh, in a room, especially when you only have one subwoofer. So you can see we've got peaks, a little bit of a null, a little peak, a big null. But then you got these big, really, really narrow dips. These are nulls. So this is a lack of bass right here. And if we click right here, you can see we've got 95 decibels at 43 hertz. But if I click right down at the bottom, at 47 hertz, we're only getting 74 decibels. So we've lost a ton of volume. So ideally looking at this, this isn't the best location. So we'll go ahead and turn on the right speaker. So this is usually what I like to do. I'll do one at a time and compare the two, figure out which one is better, and then I'll hide the one that isn't the best. So looking at this, starting at the low frequencies at 15 hertz, they pretty much align. They're pretty much identical. Okay, so right here we have less of a dip. So to me, that's a better frequency response than this one that dips way down here like this. This is pretty similar, lost a little bit of output, not much. But then again here, not quite as deep. But then up here, above the crossover frequency at probably about 82 hertz, we see it dips way down, but I'm not as concerned about that because again, that's where my crossover is going to be. So that's not as big of a deal. So to me, I see the right, if I were to place the subwoofer to the right of my front tower, that's a better location than on that angled wall. So I'm going to uncheck the angled wall and let's go to the third option, the left of the speaker. Okay, so now we're starting to see, to me, a much better frequency response again. If we look at this, they pretty much follow along, but right here, look what happens. We've got much flatter frequency response right here. See, we no longer have this big massive dip right here. So that's a great thing. And that is in the probably 25 Hertz to right about 40 Hertz. So that's a good range there that we were missing if we were to place this subwoofer in 
that right uh, or to the right of my speaker on the front right. Over here, we've got better response right here. See how that's up instead of down right here where the blue is. And then right here, we lost a little bit, but again, that's not that big of a deal. And then right up here, we are getting some funkiness right here, but again, it doesn't go down as far as this. So to me, the green, which is to the left of the speaker, is much better than the right of the speaker. So I'll turn that one off. And then our final one was in the far left corner. Let's see how that measures. So you can see here in the corner, here's what we call bound, well, I guess it, I refer to it as boundary gain. It's getting additional reinforcement because it's in the corner. It's got an additional wall for that sound to hit and to bounce off of. And that's why we've got this increase right here of output. And so we've got additional output um, pretty similar and right here though we've got another steep dip I don't really like that and then right here we have that dip there um, honestly it probably could go either way looking at either one of these because we have more output that means we can back the subwoofer gain down and so we have more headroom so that's a good thing so to me it's kind of a toss-up you know what you're looking to do Looking at this, honestly, this might actually be a better location in that front left corner. But again, either one of these would work uh, pretty well. I'm not an expert in this area as far as subwoofer placement, but I wanted you to physically see what happens when you move your subwoofer around your room and how crucial to me it is to be able to take measurements using REW, which is a free software, and then a calibrated microphone like the UMic 2 or the UMic 1 from Mini DSP. These are about 100 bucks to $150, somewhere around there. Um, but this is what allows you to take these measurements. And without the measurements, you're really guessing where the best location is in your room. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next set of measurements. Okay, so now we're going to open up the tuning modes. So this is going to show us how each one of the tuning modes change the frequency response. And so down here you can see every time I take a measurement, you want to make sure you label it. I'll just open this up real quick. So looking over here, if I click on it, you can see this is ported max output inside the manual. This is, uh, I would, this is one of the cases I want you to read the manual in this video. I'll explain it, but, um, the manual lays this out really nicely and there's a bunch of different options. You pretty much have five different options that you can configure this. There's three that are ported and two that are sealed. So here you can see I've labeled it ported max output. We've got two ports open. We use the EQ2 setting on the back of the subwoofer and I used a Q of 1.7. Um, actually, is it 0.7 or 1.7? I could be wrong on that, but I think it's 1.7. Um, but in that, that is recommended for larger rooms. And so that's why I went with that. And that was just based off of their manual. So let's go ahead and just take a look at each one of these. We'll collapse that. So we've got ported max output. Again, this isn't going to be a flat response because it's in my room one subwoofer and you're going to have room modes which are going to interact and cause, you know, these peaks and these dips in here. Let's take a look at ported max extension. So turning this on and off, you can see pretty much this line is almost identical, except we get more output. Again, that's why they call it max output um, over max extension. So extension is this right here. So you've got frequencies of 21 Hertz all the way down to, it starts dipping down, maybe say about 16 Hertz, which that's what it's rated on their website. So that at least measures or lines up what they're claiming. So that's good. But you can see on the max output, we gain output by rolling off these lower frequencies. So if you're not concerned about gaining you know, from 20 Hertz down to about 16 Hertz. If you're not worried about that and those lower frequencies, then you may want to use max output mode. If you like those lower extensions, that lower frequencies, the stuff that you can feel more than you can hear, 
that's where you might want to use this ported max extension and that option. And if I click on that, what that would be is one port open and then you've got EQ setting one. And then again, the Q is gonna vary on your room. And really you could take some measurements on the Q. I did not to see which measures best in your room once you find the correct location for your, um, for your speaker or your subwoofer. So that is the ported max extension. Let's take a look at ported max headroom. And so it's pretty similar to green. So I'm gonna turn off the red for now. And that allows us to see the differences. So to me, we've got ported max headrooms pretty much the same, except we're just losing some output down here. So to me, that wouldn't be an ideal setup in my room. Let's take a look at sealed. So now we are going from ported. So now we're removing both of those. I'm sorry, opposite. Instead of having some of them removed, we're gonna plug up both of those ports. So this is sealed mode. So in sealed mode, you can see right here, that's the orange. So we definitely get less output here, okay? So we'll go ahead and turn some of these off and we'll take a comparison here. So you can see we lose a little bit of output pretty much along the entire frequency range. Get a little bit of a bump down here near the, the bottom end at, at 16 hertz. And then again, we see it starts rolling off pretty quickly after that. So that's um, sealed max extension. So again, you're going to get more extension down here on the bottom end. If we want sealed max headroom, pretty much we lost a lot of everything. Um, so to me, again, that's not ideal. So in my room, the two that I like is the ported max output and the ported max extension. In my room, I don't really necessarily need more bass. What I'm looking for is more extension. I like those lower frequencies. And again, this is a preference. And what I love about this subwoofer is it gives you flexibility on what you like. And you can play with it, take some measurements and figure out what works best for you. But for me in this setup, in my living room, I would go with the ported max extension. So now let's look at compression testing. In a nutshell, what compression testing is, is you take a measurement, you see the frequency response, then you raise the volume about five decibels. I tend to do three decibels just the way I've always done it. Um, and what you're looking for is you should see every time you go up three decibels or five, you're going to see that amount of increase on that graph. And it should be pretty much parallel. Both lines should be running parallel with each other. And I'll show you that in a second. Eventually your speaker or your subwoofer is going to kind of run out of gas. It doesn't have the ability to go higher. And what you'll see is what we call compression. And that's where that part of the line is no longer able to produce that amount of output, that additional three decibels or five decibels. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so if I turn on the first graph here, again, your graph is gonna look different because your room acoustics are different. But I'm just gonna quickly kind of go through these. So as we take a measurement, increase the decibels, you can see this curve is pretty consistent. I mean, we're basically about identical all the way down the frequency response. And so as I keep going, you'll see when I get to the very last one, it no longer is going to increase the same amount. And so when I turn on this last one right here, you can see this area right here got really narrow. And then even right here, we got really narrow. Most of the time with compression, when you're uh, dealing with subwoofers, you're going to see that compression happen right down here on those lowest uh, extensions. So I'm gonna zoom in here just a little bit. So I've zoomed in on the graph so you can see this a little bit better. Right here, you can see we've got equal distance all the way up through here. Here it got a little bit narrower, but I don't think we were really hitting compression there because right here, we ended up basically about the same as what we were. But you can see the distance from here to here versus here to here, we've got about half that distance. And so this is where this is running out of gas, but you can see you know, we peaked out up here in the 40 to say 50 hertz range at about 107, 106 decibels. 
So plenty of volume there. Right here we're at about 102, and right here we're at about 100, almost 103 decibels. So this just gives you an idea of what the subwoofer is capable of until you reach compression. Um, the other thing is if we were to use a different port tuning, uh, like we discussed in the last graph, in the last section of this video, then this would change a little bit. You may have more output if you did the uh, max output mode. And so this line would be up a little bit higher than this. But again, this is just a good test that you can do with your subwoofer at home. All right, so now that we've gotten through all the technical information, how does the subwoofer sound? I'm gonna be quite honest with you guys. When I first connected it in my living room, fired it up, I was pretty underwhelmed. But there's a reason. I was underwhelmed because I was watching streaming content from my TV. Lack of bass, just wasn't really that full. And I'm like, you know what? Let me go in the theater room. I'm gonna bring in my 4K player and let me go through some of the content that I'm used to watching. Total, total difference. Now, granted, I've got a big room. I showed you at the beginning of the video. My room's like 25 foot wide. I've got 12 foot ceilings probably 15 foot deep is the living room, but then it's open concept. So that sound opens up to my kitchen. It opens up to my uh, kind of breakfast nook area. And then there's also the formal dining room as well. And so that's a lot of volume for a single 15 inch subwoofer to fill. But I'll be honest, man, I fired up stuff like, let me get to it here, Fury. Oh yeah. If you want a Blu-ray or a 4K disc that will stretch and test your subwoofers, great, great movie. So there's a scene where, uh, it's just kind of like the, one of the big scenes in there, the battle between these, uh, the big tank and then there's several smaller tanks and a lot of them are getting destroyed and then there's just this final showdown between the main, uh, you know, the, the good guys and this big massive tank. But in this movie, it's got a lot of LFE, a lot of low frequency effects, especially in that low end extension. And the VTF 15H Mark II did not disappoint. Even in my large room, I'm feeling some tactile response in my uh, couch. It's vibrating, I'm feeling it just a little bit. It's not huge, but again, I'm in a massive room. If I would have had the subwoofer in this smaller theater room, this is only 13 by 19 with 10 foot ceilings. There is no doubt I would definitely be feeling that pressure even more. And so if you've got a smaller room, dude, this thing is going to slam. But this is a fantastic movie. Pick this up if you don't already have that. I popped it in a quiet place. I love the bathtub scene and where she's climbing down the stairs, going down to the basement. And then you've got the monster coming down the stairs every time he stomped, man. Just this really, really deep, rich bass frequencies. Again, sounded phenomenal. Let's see, what else do I have? Top Gun, Maverick, another just killer one. Uh, enjoyed the, the takeoff when you've got those engines that are just firing up. You've got some really low extension. At no point did the subwoofer ever sound strained or like it was struggling. It just handled those frequencies with ease. Of course, go to Ready Player One, uh, the race scene at the beginning. There's another scene kind of near the end of the movie, the main battle. Just really, really great opportunities to test out the subwoofer and see what it can do. So over the past several weeks that I've had the unit set up and calibrated and dialed in, I figured out where it would sound best in my room. Really, really understand what you guys have been sharing in the comments over the past several years of why you like the shoe subwoofers. This subwoofer not only has great output, but some of the things I really am impressed with it is just the amount of features that you get with this subwoofer especially at this price point. We're talking sub $1,200. And you're getting extension in my room down to 16 hertz. I think one of you made a comment, you're getting down to 15 hertz in your room. That's incredible. If you can get a subwoofer down to 20 hertz, you're solid. I think that's where we all should strive for. 
If your subwoofer is 22, 24, 30, you're missing out on a lot of great content, a lot of tactile uh, experience when you're watching a movie and even in music. But this subwoofer handles down to 16 hertz, no problem, in my room, and with solid, solid output. Now, I'm a big proponent of getting two or more subwoofers. And the biggest reason, well, there's really a couple reasons, I would buy two of these at least. Number one, because they're super affordable. At 1200 bucks, I know it's not, it's not cheap, but there are subwoofers that are, let's face it, $2,500 that I would be okay with putting this up against and doing some head-to-head -head competition because uh, I really think it's that capable. But the reality is this has so many features for $1,200 or less, and it's actually on sale right now. Um, and I'll link it down in the description below so you guys can check that out. But there's a lot of flexibility with this subwoofer. If you're someone who loves ported, you've got three different options for port tuning. If you love a sealed subwoofer, you've got two options for a sealed subwoofer. Now, maybe, maybe you like to watch movies in ported, but maybe you like to listen to music sealed. Again, you have that flexibility. Really easy to change, plug in the ports, flip one switch on the back and you're good to go. It only takes a few seconds. And so I really love that. And this is probably the first subwoofer that I've seen, at least on the exterior amp plate that had a Q adjustment. So that's pretty cool. Again, just giving you a lot of ways that you can fine tune your system. Now, I really love the aesthetics of this. And some of you may look at the front and go, Michael, I don't know, that's a little odd shaped grill. I'm not sure I like those triangular ports. I'm really glad that Shu chose to kind of step outside the box. I mean, let's face it, every subwoofer is rectangular. Every subwoofer kind of looks the same. There are very few that try to step outside the norm and do something different. And so I applaud them for doing that. Um, and the fact that we've got just really what appears to be a very well-built subwoofer cabinet. I mean, this thing is stout, it's heavy, I love the rounded corners on it. It gives it a little bit more design versus just having just those hard, you know, edges on the sides and on the tops and the bottom. We've got really massive rubber feet. Definitely like that. And just overall aesthetics, man, I really like this. It's a decent size subwoofer. So granted, if you don't have a lot of space, um, they have other subwoofers that are smaller. But man, if you can go with something this big in your room, I really think that you're gonna be pleased, especially for the amount of money that you're gonna pay for this subwoofer. Now, speaking of the price of the subwoofer, I did notice on their website, pretty much all of their subwoofers are on sale. So if you're interested, now might be a great time to buy one of them. And Dr. Shu even mentioned that in this particular finish that I reviewed, it's actually low quantities right now. A lot of you guys have been buying it even as of late. And I've been posting online, kind of showing some pictures and stuff. And so many of you have already purchased some. So they're getting low on those quantities, but they do have some in the, I think it's the Rosewood finish or Rose Nut. I think it's Rosewood, but I'll put it up here on the screen, what he said in the email. But they definitely have some more of those finishes if you want something even with more kind of coloration for your room. Now I mentioned earlier the recommendation of going with multiple subwoofers, and I've done some videos on that, but I'll touch on it just briefly here. Number one, because these are pretty affordable, you can get two of these for the price of some of the other subwoofers that are out there that would be in that same kind of category, and you're going to be able to get two for their price of one. So that's a great reason, but the other reason is, remember earlier when we were showing you the frequency response of my room, Remember we had some really deep dips and you've got some peaks. Well, when you have multiple subwoofers and you dial those in and you time align them, maybe you add a little bit of EQ with like a mini DSP, two by four HD, that allows you to make that graph a lot smoother. And so across the frequency range from say 16 Hertz all the way up to 120 Hertz, 
you're getting about the same volume all the way across that spectrum. So it just provides a much better experience. And so by having multiple subwoofers, spreading them out in your room, time aligning them, EQing them, you can get a flatter frequency response. And that also applies to seat to seat. So let's say with one subwoofer, if I take a measurement, as you saw in there, if I were to place the subwoofer in one location and move it, that frequency response changes. Well, the same is true with the seating position. The subwoofer is locked in over here to the left of my speaker, but I may be getting this frequency response, but this person here is getting something different. So maybe they're missing out on that 50 hertz slam. Maybe this person over here, it's really boomy. Some of those frequencies are overextended and they're being pushed up too much. So again, having multiple subwoofers can really help you dial in your system. Now, overall, this is an incredible subwoofer, but there's no subwoofer that is perfect. And so I did wanna share with you one negative thing that I found while testing the subwoofer. Now I have reviewed a lot of subwoofers over the years and pretty much all of the ported subwoofers have some amount of port chuffing. Port chuffing is when you are pretty much cranking the subwoofer at a pretty good volume and the amount of air that is trying to come out of the ports, it's, there's too much air and it's not flowing fast enough. And so you hear this kind of warble sound. Now, before I take you into the living room and show you the port chuffing that I heard, keep in mind, I did not hear this while I was watching any of this content. So while I'm watching Fury, my ears never said, man, I hear that port chuffing over there. This is just in base frequency testing at a decent volume. So let's head in the living room, and let's check it out. So I decided to test out the Shoe Base Test CD. You can see here on the back, we've got a lot of different symphony uh, tracks. And then we also down here, tracks number nine to 21, it says third octave wide warble tones, 16 Hertz to 250 Hertz. So one thing I did notice is when playing the 16 Hertz, you'll see right here, I've got the volume set at negative 15 dB on the AVR right there. You'll hear some, what they call port noise. So I'm just gonna hit play. So this is track nine. We'll back it up here and hit play. All right, so you'll hear it right here. Now, part of what you're hearing is this little, my grandson's toy vibrating, so I'll move that out of the way. This is going to go up to the next frequency. Not as bad there. But you can still hear it. It's probably about 17 hertz, maybe 18 hertz. And then once we get up to the next track, you don't hear any port noise. So overall, I'm ecstatic that I had the opportunity to finally, after six years, to review one of the shoe subwoofers. I can absolutely see why many of you have recommended their company over the years and say, Michael, they provide an amazing product, great value. Is it the best subwoofer out on the market? No. But my goodness, for the price that you pay, you get a tremendous, tremendous value, but you also get a quality subwoofer as well. Well guys, if you've enjoyed this video, I'll have links down in the description to the Shoe VTF 15H Mark II subwoofer. So be sure to check them out and give some love to Dr. Shoe. And who knows, maybe we can get them at M-Wave 2024. Hope you guys have an incredible week. God bless, and we will catch you in the next video.